Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Today is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost, week 23 of 34. So the 34 counts us down to the beginning of Advent. Today in our readings, we are reminded that as a community in relationship with one another and with God, we have a responsibility to forgive and to seek forgiveness, to support and to hold accountable our brothers and sisters in the church in living out the faith. The slide should guide you through our service as usual. At the time of Holy Communion, all baptized Christians are welcome to receive the sacrament. I invite you to stand as you're able. Let us begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin, and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again life in you through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord amen God hears the cries of all who call out in need and through his death and resurrection Christ has made us his own hear the truth that God proclaims your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ led by the Holy Spirit live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. We sing together, Praise my soul, the King of heaven, the God of heaven. Praise my soul, the God of heaven. Joyfully your tribute bring, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, evermore God's praises sing. Alleluia, alleluia, praises everlasting ring. God be praised for grace and favor to our forebears in distress. God be praised the same forever, slow to chide and swift to bless. Alleluia, alleluia, Glorious is God's faithfulness. Frail as summer's flower we flourish, Blows the wind and it is gone, But as mortals rise and perish, God endures unchanging on. Alleluia, Alleluia, praise the great eternal one. Angels sing in adoration, in God's presence face to face. Sun and moon and all creation, all who dwell in time. 
time and space. Alleluia, Alleluia, praise with us the God of grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the well-being of the whole, for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. O Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. A reading from Ezekiel. God declares, So you mortal. I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read this psalm responsively. Teach me, O Lord, the ways of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Make me go in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant which you make to those who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. In your righteousness, preserve my life. A reading from Romans. O to no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you should not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. 
for our salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. In Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the faults when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There are only a few places in the scripture where the word church occurs. And here is one of them. As Jesus talks about church, how church should live together. I've talked about this diagram that's on the slides before, but it's appropriate to come back to again. And it's perhaps appropriate, especially now, uh, not just as we think about it in relationship to congregations and churches, but in the way it can be applied to the wider culture in which we live. That is, the model is one of three pillars that hold up community. And when I say community, I mean congregations, organizations, uh, fraternal, uh, organizations, professional groups. I'll say more about that in a second. And the, the metaphor is a stool, right? A stool doesn't stand up unless it has at least three legs. Take away one leg, it falls over. So these are pillars of community necessary for community to hold us up, for the community to be held up. The church is one such community. But as we've heard about the news, as we've heard about the news for months now, I often think about professional police fraternities, professional police organizations, and local police organizations in cities as communities. Black Lives Matters groups and those who are working for racial justice, likewise, are a community. So the things that I say this morning, looking to Jesus for instruction, apply not just to congregations, but to all kinds of communities and organizations. Whether the teaching comes from Jesus or not, communities must have these pillars. But in fact, Jesus teaches these things as well. The scriptures teach these things as well. And all of them, are based on this premise, which is declared by the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says, I, ha I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked may turn from their ways and live. 
in a very real sense. We are given the community that is called the congregation to help us be our best selves, to be more fully the human beings that God sees us to be as we live our life in Christ, as we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, as we demonstrate our membership in the kingdom of God. So to congregations and to professional organizations and to groups of all kinds, we remember the three legs of the stool, the three pillars of community. The first of these is a common standard, a, a common way to live together. So this includes things such as mission and values and goals and commitments laws. How can we create a community if there's no sense of unity in what the community should be about? This person wants to plant corn. That person wants to, wants to build buildings. That person, well, you have communities of plumbers. We have communities of farmers. We have, and they, well, moving ahead, right? They agree on what they're going to do. Congregations, likewise, must have a vision and a mission connected to what Jesus calls us to be about, the kingdom of God, the proclamation of the good news. The first leg, the first pillar of a community is common standards, an agreement about how we will live together. The second pillar, the second leg of the stool is mutual support. As we hold one another together to that standard, through education, through mentorship, through training, through discipleship, we inform one another of who we are and who we want to be, and we support one another in those tasks, in what we do. In living as the children of God, we support one another as fellow siblings of God. Then we come to the third pillar, the third leg of the stool, which may be the most difficult for us as 21st century Christians. Because we've, we've been steeped in a culture that says, you are individuals. You are free individuals. You should get to do whatever you want. So I'll I'll agree to these standards now, but then I'll maybe not do them later. And I'll, I'll look for some support when I want it, but I'll kind of not offer it when I don't want. The third leg of the stool is mutual accountability. As God speaks to Ezekiel, he says, you have a responsibility. If I tell you to inform the people of their sins, you have a responsibility to tell them, to hold them accountable to the standards which are the commandments of God to which they've agreed because they've said they were the people of God. You have a responsibility to mutual accountability. Jesus says, if another member of the church sins against you, don't go pout in the corner. Don't go wait for them to come to you because they should know better. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. This is Jesus talking about mutual accountability. Make amends for the sake of the community to which you have committed yourself. If another member of the church sins against you, that is, they've hurt your feelings, they've hurt you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. You've agreed how to live together. You've hopefully trained one another and supported one another and educated one another in how to live together. And when that fails, as it will, because we are broken and fallen sinners, seek reconciliation. Seek to make it right. That's mutual accountability. Hold one another 
and yourself to those common standards. Jesus specifically speaks to the church here. As I said, one of the few places in the scripture where the word ecclesia, the called out people, which is translated church, is used in the scriptures. And he says, begin this process one-on-one -on -one as a demonstration of love for the neighbor. Go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. Community has been restored. Someone has been set back on the path, and you have come with them. But if you are not listened to, take two, one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses that reconciliation was sought, that love was demonstrated, and if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Now there is some irony in this teaching of Jesus as he talks about let such a one be as a Gentile and a tax collector. For the Pharisees overhearing Jesus, they would have said Gentiles and tax collectors, they should be kicked out and never talked to again. But remember what Jesus does to Gentiles. He heals them talks with them and eats with them. And what does Jesus do with tax collectors? Tax collectors like Matthew. He calls them into the community and makes them one of the close 12 so that that Matthew, the tax collector, might become the evangelist that brings us this teaching of Jesus across the centuries. As soon as one of these legs is pulled away from congregations, from organizations, from communities of all kinds, if we don't hold one another accountable to the standards we have agreed to, we sit on a shaky stool waiting to fall over. Think of the organizations, the groups, the communities of which you are a part family, city of Janesville, St. John Lutheran Church, maybe clubs and organizations, maybe professional groups. See how this teaching of Jesus reminds us of what is needed. We must take the initiative for reconciliation. The stool does not stand with only two legs. We desire a community that is strong and stable, willing to be a witness to God and the teachings of Jesus in the world. Thanks be to God, who gives us grace to share love as he has loved us. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ on the roadway, our Lord companion walks with his own. When they invite him, as fades the first day, and bread is broken, Christ is made known. When we are walking, doubtful and dreading, blinded by sadness,
slowness of heart. Yet Christ walks with us, ever awaiting our invitation. Stay, do not part. Though I am with you, Jesus has spoken. This is Christ's promise. This is Christ's sign. When the church gathers, when bread is broken, there Christ is with us in bread and wine. Christ our companion, oh, for the journey, bread of compassion, open our eyes. Grant us your vision, set all hearts burning, that all creation with you may rise. The peace of Christ be with you always. God has made us God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your church, O God. Grant us the gifts of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the cooperative work of churches in this community, especially the work of ECHO. Strengthen ecumenical partnerships guide the work of Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches. Bless those of our congregation that celebrate the anniversary of baptism this week. Timothy Wright, Jennifer Yeomans, Colin Ruiz, Blake Ruiz, Devin Hergert, Maxwell LaCary, Brandon Waples, Ronald Enocenti, Amelia LaCary, Barbara Cleesby, Morgan Arneson, Zachary Martin, Parker Madison, Jenna Randall, and Dylan Kirsten. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways that do not harm what you have entrusted to our care. Renew and enliven places suffering from drought, flood, storms, or pollution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn nations and leaders from ways that lead to death. Shape new paths toward peace and cooperation, teaching us to recognize one another as neighbors. Guide legislators, civil servants, judges, and police toward laws that protect the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. 
shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for Elaine, Mavis, the family of Susan, the family of Gloria, Annette, Judy, Ed, Larry, Lois, Carol, Karen, Jean, Carl, Patty, Bev, Jennifer, Gloria, those affected by COVID-19, and those we name now silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain us in our work, O God, and give work to those who need it. Shape societies to ensure fair treatment for all who labor. Help us to love our neighbors in and through our work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in faith. As you equip them, equip us with your protection and power until, we, until with them we see your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. I left the offering in back because I was distracted. So I will bring it up at the end. Lord God, wellspring of peace and true worship, let our offering come before you as fitting homage to your glory, and let our partaking of these sacred mysteries unite our hearts in faith. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us recite together the offering psalm. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, our bread of life, our table, and our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life. 
and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen here's the banquet table where christ gives himself as food and drink thanks be to god please be seated as we sing the lamb of god
please stand as you're able and join me in the post-communion canto. Lord, thy you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, at the table of your word and sacrament, you nourish your faithful and give them life. Grant that through these gifts of your Son, we may advance in holiness and be worthy to share his life forever. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated for just a moment because I have a long uh, Labor Day prayer that you probably want to be seated for. Uh, no Bible study tomorrow. Office is closed tomorrow for Labor Day. Uh, we will be beginning our Discovering the Bible, and you'll get a phone call from me. Our Discovering the Bible Bible study will begin again on Wednesday. Um, I'm going to call everyone who was involved in that. Um, and you can attend that live in person or by Zoom on the computer or just by a conference call if you just want to call up. So uh, much as Dave Moore is doing for Adult Forum, we're going to do that for uh, Wednesday, excuse me, Wednesday evening and afternoon Bible study. I have printed off the readings for the next three Sundays in September. Um, I'd like to try to, uh, to invite readers from the congregation to, to read our first reading and the, the, uh, the second reading, the epistle reading. And I would lead the, the psalm and read the gospel. And here's how I'm envisioning that would happen. Uh, again, six months ago, all the safety things, I tried to figure this all out. Um, I, will, I will identify who it is that's reading, and I will take the cordless microphone and give it to you so you can read right from your seat. Um, read the first reading and the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. I'll lead the psalm, then same place right from your seat. So there's no extra moving around. Again, we're trying to eliminate the kind of the cross traffic that happens. But I imagine that you're getting tired of hearing my voice only for 45, 55 minutes on Sunday morning. So I'd like to be able to open that up for readers. So if you're interested in reading uh, with the provision, you wouldn't have to come up here. You wouldn't have to be on camera. Um, see me afterward. I'll, I'll give you those readings. I'll mark down what week you're doing that for. And then I'll make sure I give you the microphone um, on that particular Sunday. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. So, a prayer for Labor Day. Please join me in prayer. Lord of life, you have given us six days on which to work and modeled resting in your word on the Sabbath. We give thanks for fair labor practices that offer time for worship, rest, and leisure as balance to our daily work. We pray for good and productive work in our professions and pursuits for the welfare of our neighbors. We pray for just and safe working conditions for all, for living wages, for honor and dignity in our employment. We pray that you work against all forces that steal human dignity or rob communities of the economic support they need from their labors to live sufficiently and well. For all those who defend the dignity of work and all those who help us discover how to connect our faith to work, we give you thanks. We pray for those whose livelihood is insecure, for those who are bearing heavy burdens and stressful times at work, for those whose work is tedious or dangerous, for those who have experienced failures at work, for those who have lost a job, and for all who face any difficulty in their lives of labor. Surround them with your never failing love. Free them from restlessness and anxiety and keep them in every perplexity and distress. And renew them in facing the opportunities and challenges of daily life and work through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. We sing joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, praising thee, their Son above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the gloom of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Go in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God.